Now for more on the latest developments in Egypt, I am joined by my colleague Sharon Bain, the Islamabad Bureau Chief. Sharon, good evening. Good evening, how are you? I am hugely terrific. Uh, give us um, a sense uh, of what's happening on the ground following Monday's escalating violence, Sharon. Well, actually, today is the first day of Ramadan in Egypt, and Cairo has been pretty quiet. I can hear behind me the call to prayer right now as we're speaking, and everybody is celebrating the first day of Ramadan. You know, Sharon, there is a debate as to whether what occurred uh, last Wednesday in Egypt is a coup or is something else. I'm sure that uh, you've talked to some people on the ground. What is or what seems to be their view on this? I think that's a, a very crucial point. I, the ones who were pushing to have Morsi removed are saying this is not a coup, that this is a second revolution, that there were 33 million people that rose up protesting against what Mr. Morsi had done, and that the military simply responded to what the people wanted and overthrew Mr. Morsi. However, on the other side, the supporters of Mr. Morsi, the Muslim Brotherhood especially, have said absolutely not. Morsi was a democratically and legitimately elected leader, and he should be reinstated. They're saying it absolutely is a coup. And I think this is the, the most important divide between these two groups. That's very interesting because uh, the African Union, of course, uh, which is headquartered in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, uh, says uh, that this is a coup, and as such, they have suspended the membership, of course, of Egypt from the organization. While here in Washington, uh, the Obama administration uh, seems to see it differently. What do people think about the U.S. position on last week's events? Well, that's, that is very interesting. I think the U.S. has been trying to walk a delicate line and not say, you know, whether it is a coup or not. But on the ground here... A lot of people are very upset and disappointed with the position that the United States has taken or the position that it has not taken. Those who, again, who supported Mr. Morsi's ouster are saying that they're disappointed that the Americans haven't come up and said, you know, good for democracy, we're supporting you all the way. And they have a lot of anti-American posters out. They're, you know, slamming uh, Mr. Obama for not having supported what they say is a democratic will of the people being enacted. At the same time, the Muslim Brotherhood have also said that they're very, they're very angry with the United States because this was a democratically elected leader who was ousted and that it, the United States should call it a coup. So there are divisions here. And actually, the, the only time that I've seen these two groups speak on the same page is when they're criticizing the United States for not having taken a clear position. To what extent uh, has that uh, affected you, uh, given that... Uh you are covering this story on behalf of uh, an American news organization. I think, you know, everybody's been very understanding and, and we are part of the media who's trying to cover this story and we've had no problem with people speaking to us and even speaking to our different language services in different languages. And um, I think it's been fine. We've been okay so far. Any particular reason, uh, uh, any particular problems that you encounter as a female as a woman covering a story in Cairo? I think, um, you know, all journalists encounter problems, and uh, Jeremy Bowen was one uh, British journalist who actually got shot in the head with some birdshot covering something. There are uh, different, maybe uh, there have been some problems down in Terrier Square that I think have been addressed by human rights organizations also. There have been m many, I mean, dozens of uh, sexual assaults in Terrier Square, particularly at night when it's very, very crowded. And there have been reports of rape. Uh, when a couple of female journalists have said that they've been raped. Right now in Terrier Square, with the last time I was there, they had actually separated a whole area for all the women protesters so that they could protest without being sexually harassed. But I think as, you know, as a reporter overall, we, um, the stories, the stories, what's important, and we're going to go get it. Well, Sharon, thank you so much uh, for that report, and please take care of yourself. Thank you very much. You're most welcome.